Thank you so much for having us. That music band, the Music Academy, what? they didn't have this when we were growing up. There's Ojoro Daddy. What we had was Girls Brigade, Boys Brigade. I used to play drums that time. Now seeing these people, I'm like, ah, this is way cooler. But the music, it was so moving. We were feeling you and then you ended it. It's not fair now. Thank you so much. That was, this is not a typical Nigerian church from uh, my observations through the peripheral level of the photosynthesis of my eyeglasses. Pastor Badu, thank you so much, Daddy, for answering the call of God to make this a reality. And I will still come to that. Yesterday at the praise and worship, my husband and I, we felt like we were back in Nigeria. You see, this is what happens when you don't go to Nigerian church. I think the last time was two years ago when we were here. And then we were here last night and all the drums and the dancing, we were like, ah, oh, we are back to Nigeria. Hey, we were feeling you guys. So uh, you learn more. Thank you so much for having us in that uh, praise service. It was very powerful and wonderful. So I want to start out by thanking Pastor Badru and Mommy Shade Badru for having us over and over again. This is like the third time that they are having us at this church. I feel like we're already members of the church. Our seat is back there. So if you see us on any day that we are not invited and we are just sitting by, it's because we are members, so don't say, ah, what are you doing here? Thank you so much, Daddy. And I want to thank all the church members for not getting tired of us. Thank you. We appreciate you. We have been enjoying VIP treatment. The food just is beyond surplus. But I'm just so grateful. God bless you. We don't take it for granted. Who are we? Thank you so much. So today, they wanted me to talk about uh, dreaming big. And when I looked at it, I was like, <laughs> I laughed because I'm like, I'm the wrong person to talk about this. Because as far as I am concerned, I'm not even anywhere close to scratching the surface when it comes to what God wants me personally to do on this side of eternity. So I'm like, why would I now be talking to other people? But I'm grateful and I'm humbled that they wanted me to talk about some of the things that, I, that has helped me in my journey. But I'd like to put out a disclaimer that everything I'll be talking about today is actually for me. It's like me reminding myself. So I'm not here to preach at anybody. I'm here to remind myself of some points which I think will be helpful to other people as well. So I'm going to start by having us do an exercise together and then at the very end we will do that exercise proper for now our time us will only do it for like two minutes okay guys i want everybody to relax please relax smile forget about the makeup that you think you didn't do well forget about the phone calls and who is here who is not here some of you did not get enough sleep because you were here till 1 a.m you are tired some of, some of you are hungry. Forget about all of that. Just for one minute. I just want you to be present. And I want you to close your eyes. I want you to do this exercise with me. Just for a minute. Be here. Close your eyes. Relax. Some of you are still looking at me. Bro, Victor, close your eyes. <laughs> close your eyes. Relax. For one minute, I want you to imagine... If money is not the problem, if time is not the problem, because some of you, you have children, you don't have time. If time is not your problem, if money is not your problem, if resources is not your problem, I want you to note down at least three to five things that you would do that you would like to achieve before you leave this side of eternity. 
someday every one of us here they will write 19 so 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 dash whenever it is that the lord calls you home what do you want that dash to be for me it would be 1984 dash whenever the lord calls me home you feel me so for you it would be your your year of birth and then they will write a dash and then they will write whenever whatever year it is that the lord calls you home what do you want that dash to be to the people that know you what are some things that you would love for them to remember you for some things you will still like to achieve think about it bring it close bring it close money is not the problem resources is not the problem time is not the problem what it is that you would what is it that you would like to achieve before they write that dash about you thank you so much for doing that we can open our eyes did i take you somewhere that maybe you don't like to go <laughs> did some ideas come to your mind is there anybody here that doesn't have anything else they want to achieve they're like that's it i'm done they can write the dash is there anybody here like that is there anybody here that will still like to achieve something if that's you raise your hand i want to see is there anybody here you still there are some things you believe you are still okay so then let's talk me and you we can talk i'm going to give you just a few um points that helps me although i cannot promise you that i will get through all the points in the time that we have but the very first thing that i want you to remember is that it's not about you it's not about it like fyi for your information breaking news it is not about you it was never about you by the way you're an instrument you are like clay in the potter's hands it's sad because sometimes we forget this sometimes we we think it's about us sometimes we make it about us but it is not about you it was never about you it will never be about you i'll put this in perspective have you ever had an idea at the back of your mind but you didn't really do anything about it and then you now came across someone doing exactly what you had in mind you were like i had this same idea has that ever happened to anybody my people god will do whatever he wants to do if you don't act on something that he's putting on your mind he will find somebody that would gladly jump on it we are just instruments it's like if you have a house help for example and you send them somewhere and the house help is like but how do i look am i tall enough do i measure up and they are consumed with and you look at them you're like who are you it's not about you it's about the message it's about the assignment if this house help doesn't go you will find somebody else that would go i think when we start to understand that all these dreams that god has put inside us all these ideas when we understand it has nothing to do with us really we would it will eliminate a lot of pressure first of all it will eliminate fear fear is one of the reasons that people don't go after their dreams if my if i send uh my daughter to deliver something and she's like ah, you are sending me to a whole pastor tunde badru how can you send me to pastor tunde badru I'm, who am i and all that i'll look at her and say my dear it's not about you it's about what i'm sending you to give him that should eliminate her fear of who you are telling me to face 
which will answer some of you guys' question about how do you do what you do. It's not about me. All these politicians that I talk about, and so this, some of these people are like powerful people. But I'm, I'm hidden behind the almighty when I'm talking to the mighty, if that makes sense. There's an almighty, and then there, there are some small, small mighties on, on this side. It is not about you. If I don't get to the rest of the points, if you don't uh, listen to the rest of this message, please let this one sink in. It is never about you. It's, it is about the assignment that God has for you. When I think about Joseph sometimes, him becoming uh, a governor in Egypt, him becoming a leader in his master's house and all that, if he should be giving God excuses that, God, why do you want me to do this? I can't do this. Like Moses was saying, do you know that God knew what he would do with Joseph like thousands of years. Well, let me say from the beginning because he is God. But remember when he was telling Abraham that uh, your descendants, they would be slaves in Egypt. You think God didn't already know how he would get them to Egypt? He already had everything planned. It was Joseph that all those things were new to. Like, how did I find myself here? What do I do from here? God had a plan the whole time. For every single one of us here, God has a plan. It doesn't matter where we are, we are finding ourselves right now. It's not a mistake. He has a plan and it is not about us. First of all, it is about the people that God wants to use you to touch. Please, with a show of hands, who here is happy that Pastor Tunde Badru and Pastor Shadi Badru started this church. You are happy they started this church. You have been blessed from what's happening here. So what if Pastor Badru was like, God, I know what you are saying, but I'm not up, I'm not up to it. I'm not up for it. Would you have even known of Pastor Badru? You may not. Because guess what? God will find somebody else. How many people here are happy that daddy and mommy, Mike Pamiloye, answered the call of God on their lives? Now imagine if daddy was like, I mean, this was in the 90s or 80s, I don't remember. Imagine if daddy was like, I'm a man. How can you be telling me to do drama? My mates are becoming doctors, lawyers, engineers. Me, I want to do drama. At that time, oh, imagine if daddy tell, should tell God all the reasons why. And then daddy is trying to marry mommy. And mommy is asking, so what do you do for a living? <laughs> and daddy is like, I'm into drama. Who wants to marry a man that is into drama? At that time, because they, they hadn't even started the movies. I think they started with drama. Now imagine daddy saying, I'm into drama. And mommy is like, eh. <laughs> now drama we go chop. But mommy also by faith saw what daddy was seeing. It is not about you. If God is laying it on your mind to become a medical doctor, it is about the people that he will use you to save. Every day, I thank God for my doctor. I'm, I'm sure you guys saw my testimony video. And I always wonder, what if this woman, my doctor, decided not to follow through with that calling, especially with all the other doctors that were coming in that day, especially the witch. I told you about the witch that kept saying, oh, she just doesn't have pain tolerance. What if that has to be my doctor? Maybe I won't be here today. If God is laying it on your mind, to start a business and you're like i don't have experience with business how do i navigate through this my people i was in the bathroom just now i saw one of my mothers here she said ah adiola thank you for the hair products that you make it's really working for my daughter and I, her hair is growing i was like ah, i wanted to cry because 
<laughs> when we were starting this thing, it was like play, like play. It was working for us, but we were like, what if it's not going to work for other people? And God was like, this is not about you. It's about some people need it just like you needed it and you came up with it. I gave you the idea in the first place. So I think if we all understand that it's not about us, is God telling you to speak somewhere? Is God telling you to start making videos about an idea, about a topic? Is God telling you to, whoever started this music academy, God bless them. Are we not happy that they obeyed the call of God? They obeyed the assignment. When I started doing my show, at that time there was no woman, African woman that was doing what I was doing. And for the longest, what I had was abuses, attacks. How can you be speaking about politicians? They will come and pick you up. They will arrest you. Now, this was coming from people that I thought I was speaking for. They won't do it, but then if you do it, they attack you. They don't have the guts to attack the people that are frustrating their lives, but they were attacking me. But for me, I kept going because I knew, I knew from the beginning this was not about me. Who am I, first of all? It was never about me. Now, I had no idea what God had in store. To be honest with you, I was hoping for 100 views. That's all I was hoping for. And then we got 100, and then we got a little bit more. Yes, than 100. But to be honest with you, I never thought, okay... By 2024, someday I will be at King's Palace talking because of what I'm doing. I never saw any of this. All you need to do is obey God. Do that thing that he's putting in your mind and will still come back to that idea. But you have to start taking steps towards it. He knows how to take care of the logistics. There are people here that are into logistics, but there is a God that is bigger than any. Yes, thank you so much, sir. He's the master of logistics. Imagine if I have a cook and I'm telling my cook, tonight I want ogbono soup. I want some fish. I want some pomo. I want some uh, goat meat in my ogbono soup. And then now picture my cook shaking and sweating, and I'm like, ah, what's the problem? And it's like, hey, madam, Obona is expensive now. I don't know how I would afford goat meat. The salary I'm making is not enough for the pomo. And the, imagine my cook going on and on about all that, and I'm like, ah, uncle, are you? Did you pay for the one of yesterday? Your job is to do what? To cook. It. Thank you, Daddy. Since when did it become your job to worry about the resources that you need? Mr. Cook, it is not about you. It is about Ogbono soup and all the seasonings. It is about you making it what it's supposed to be. The resources will be taken care of by who? By me, the Ogbono eater. Thank you, Daddy. So, if God is giving you a dream, do you really think he will not be able to, to provide everything you need to do that thing? I think we've become so used to seeing the glory of God that we don't even notice anymore. We get so occupied by things. We get busy. Just the drive to this place alone... I wonder if some of us took the time to, to just look around. Hey, God is so great. The trees, the sun, everything we saw on our way here. He put them all together. And he didn't make any mistake. You see some trees sometimes and you're like, ah, ah. And when you go, no, you go, no, no, no. But even if you didn't notice anything on your way here, I just want you to take five seconds. Look at the person next to you. Ah, 
ah, turn well, take a good look at them. Look at them from their head. Notice their teeth as they are smiling. Notice their teeth. Look at their nose. Some of them have toro. You know what they call toro? Some, uh-huh. Some of them are what they call slim feet. Look at daddy now. We can eat the same food and daddy will still be what? Slim feet. Some of them are what we call chubby. Look at the different hair on their head. Well, if it's not your hair, it's a different <laughs> situation. Okay. Do you know that this thing next to you is a whole factory? The blood is pumping right, like, right there as this person is sitting next to you. The blood is flowing. Water is going where it's supposed to go. The muscles are all working. Some of them just raise their hands now. The hands are working as they should. Daddy just lifted his legs. For us to see, the legs are working. The work that God did just on you as a human being, is, you can explain it. It's inexplainable. And the fact that you are breathing in fresh air every day, me, I've breathed, I've breathed in fresh air for the last 40 years. Oh, let me take another breath. <sighs> I've done that for 40 full years. The same amount of time it took the Israelites to go run in the wilderness. Some of you have done it for 60 years, 70 years, 80 years. I don't know how old you are. 20 years, you've been breathing in and breathing out. If he's able to do all that, what is a dream to him? He gave you the dream in the first place. Amen, somebody. So when you know that it is not about you, you will relax. You will stop worrying about, so how do I do it? Right now, I have four kids. And God is telling me he wants to use me to do this, to do that. I can't even get a break. Let him worry about it. The most important thing that God wants from us is obedience. Are you willing to work with me? I'll say to my cook, are you willing to work with me? I give you money, you go and buy what we need, and we make this thing happen. But imagine if it's like, no, I just need a minute to cry because I seriously cannot afford this Ogbono soup. And he's there crying. What do you think I will do? I will find somebody else that will do it. So it is very important for us to know that it's not about us. Another thing that I want to say is that <clears throat> when you know that it's not about you, you will not care what anybody says. When I asked you guys to close your eyes and you, you were thinking about your dreams, You'll be amazed, the dreams that are in this room. Some people don't talk about what it is God has laid on their heart because people may say that they are crazy or people may laugh at them. Like you, how do you want to do it? In 2007, when I went home, my whole dream was to start a media company in Nigeria. I went to National Broadcasting Commission I said I wanted to inquire about getting a broadcasting license. First of all, this was 2007, right? I was so skinny. They, they looked at me up and down. And I went by myself. I should have gone with my father, you know? They looked at me from top to bottom. They said, who wants the license again? <laughs> You want to broadcast? After laughing at me, they now told me all the reasons why it would never happen. And then they said, in fact, you also need 11 million naira for license. And you need so, so million for this one, so, so million for this one. And then it has to go through the president's desk. The president has to approve. That alone would take maybe three to five years. They were telling me all those things. First of all, I'm like, 
why, why does the president need to be the one to approve? And so, oh, I'm hoping that they, they, they should have changed that by now, hopefully, but this was 2007. They told me every reason why it would never happen. So I was like, thank you, and I left. I came back to America. I'm like, oh, YouTube is free. I can use what I have in the meantime. And I, I started on YouTube. Anyways, some people's idea are here. People will laugh at them. But does that mean that your dream is not legit? Does that mean that you are not meant to do it? If something is really burning in your heart, if you are so passionate about something, there is a reason why. First of all, you did not make yourself. God made you. It is not an accident that you are very passionate about children. Some people are very passionate about children. Oh, we need to start children's church. We need to catch them young. They need to know that some people are so passionate about children. It's not an accident. It is because God made you exactly how you needed to be made for him to do what he needed to do. You know, we were reading about Rahab recently. And we were discussing the fact that she was not afraid of the king, the king of the land. She hid the Israelites, knowing fully whether she could get in trouble. Everybody should be afraid of a whole king. This woman was a prostitute. Somebody that, even somebody that is not a king would dismiss. Ah, Asha woman, You know how she makes her money? People talk about her. I'm sure she knows. And to now talk about the king being summoned in front of the king. And she lied to the king's face like that because she's more afraid of the God that made the heavens and the earth. When you know it's not about you, it removes every fear. You go after what it is that God wants you to do. From when you were in your mother's womb, he made you. He planned everything. Embrace it. Embrace what he has for you. Now, another point that I want to remind you of after telling you it is not about you is the fact that those who went... Uh, ahead of us, the Bible says that they are watching us as we are fighting our battle. You know, we call them giants of faith. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, I think sometimes we forget that. We all know that God is watching. We know he has his angels. But I think sometimes we forget that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. I don't know who it is that you admire in the Bible or a Christian that you admire that is no more. I think some of us are not afraid of God. We are not afraid of angels, which scares me. But if I tell you that Billy Graham is watching you as you are running your race, some of you will sit up tighter. Moses in the Bible is watching... Do you know, people like Moses, people like Daniel, if you can hear from them today, they will say, they they will just look at some of us and be like, what are you doing? You don't even know the God you are serving. Do you know, when I was here on this side of eternity, this God shut the mouth of lions. I did not say one lion, no. Imagine if Daniel should sit with some of you today, he would just be like, eh, this is what you call having faith, exercising faith. This is what you call your Christian race. They'll be like, ah, come, move closer. Move we learn something. Do you know how big this God is? Mary will tell you, have you ever heard that anybody got pregnant without... I don't know, I wanted to say without having sex, but yesterday when Daddy, my family was talking about the movie, instead of Daddy to say, oh, we need to take sex seriously, Daddy said, conjugal rights. So, have you ever heard of <laughs> anybody being pregnant without conjugal rights? I said to my husband, I said, why didn't Daddy just say sex? It's okay. But mommy has told us that Daddy is a brother somebody. 
that he even prefers bro Mike. If the people that have gone before us, if they should come today, and they're like, yo, this thing you are doing, you have not even tapped into 1% of the resources you have available for you. David will tell you, there are angels who are waiting for you to pray to God so that he can discharge them. Do you know there was a time we went to battle and all we did was to sing? Have you ever heard of people winning battle by singing? Imagine, look at what is going on in Gaza, in Israel. And then for one of the countries to now say, you know what, this is how we will fight our own battle. Let's go there. Let's sing. Amen. Amen. And, and all the news people are like, what's, what's happening here? And the other country is throwing bombs and stuff like that. And they are singing. And guess what? It worked. Those other people started killing themselves. These things are not just stories. They're actually real. They are things that actually happened. I think sometimes we forget that. We formalize reading the Bible. It's like, oh, I've read my Bible for today. We don't actually think these are things that happened. And someday, people will write about what is happening in our time as well. It's not the Bible, but it would be a guide for other people. Those people that have gone, they are watching as we are, quote and unquote, fighting our own battle. And what I mean by that is doing what we were meant to do, what we were created to do. There are people that I'm hoping to talk to someday when we get to heaven. People like Ruth. I wanted to know why she would go with her mother-in-law when it looked like everything was hopeless. She didn't see anything. I'm pretty sure she didn't have a vision board when she was going. There was nothing to look forward to. But look at what God did. She's in the genealogy of Jesus. The same thing with uh, Rahab, by the way, who decided to defy a whole king because she was more afraid of God. So... If the people that have gone before us, and some of them are people that we know personally. Like for me, I think about my dad a lot. Oh, I'm pretty sure he's so proud of me. He has never seen me do my show, you know. He was, he was gone before I started doing the show. He was gone before I uh, married Victor. He knew about Victor. He, you know, Victor fire on Victor fire on. But... He didn't get to meet him, but Victor knew him. <laughs> but guess what? Even though he didn't get to see what I'm doing here physically, he is watching. As this lawmaker was reporting me at the Senate, she's in UK. My father was, is laughing in heaven like, <laughs> trying to come after my baby girl. You don't even know where she is. I mean, sit down. He's watching. And so is Daniel, so is David, so is Joseph. They are watching us. When we think about that, it will help us sit up more and be like, you know what, I need to do this thing. And the last thing that I will talk about is the fact that sometimes we think we have time, but we don't. I wrote a lot of Bible verses here, by the way, that I'm, I'm not going over because of time. <clears throat> Psalms 113, verse 4 to 9. I'll just read one. God is higher than anything and anyone, outshining everything you can see in the skies. Who exactly can compare with God? Who? He's so majestically enthroned, surveying his magnificent heaven and earth. I wrote that down for when I was talking about the fact that you serve a big God. He made you. He put you together. Whatever it is he put in your mind, he can do it. So the last thing that I said I would talk about is the fact that we have limited time. We just don't know it. We think that, oh, we'll be here for a long time. But anything can happen at any time. But do we all know that it's not really about how long we live, but how well we leave. There are some 20 something year olds that touch more lives. That when they were gone, 
people were like, Kai. And then we would say, oh, and they are just starting life. Oh, we don't know what God had in store for them. Some 30-something-year-olds, when they, they leave, some 40-something-year-olds, they've made more impact than people that are 70. Some people are just existing. They are not leaving. You have to leave. The time that you have been given, make the best of it. Live life. Live to the fullest. Go after every dream. Don't let anything hold you back. It's better for you to fail than for you to not try at all. Because by failing, at least you can tell somebody else what did not work. So that you don't do what you did. So there's nothing like failure as far as God is concerned. I'm leaving you with this verse. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, Kai. Above and above all that we can ask or imagine. Sometimes I wish I can just jam Bill Gates on the road. Like, let his car hit my car. Just a little bit. And then I come down, ah, it's Bill Gates. Okay, now. It's a brand new car. Uh, insurance is saying that they cannot cover it. They say you need to buy a new one. I can boldly tell him that because he's what? He's Bill Gates. I want him to buy me a new car. But if I should jam, let me, I, I wanted to use somebody as an example, but they will, they will hate me if they see this video. <laughs> yeah, I will be like, ah, oh, no, not you, my brother. <laughs> when you know the kind of God that you serve, you know that the, the resources are limitless. Tap into that. Your time is limited. For me, it's, it's an opportunity, a, a privilege to be alive. Because I've had near-death experiences. And I know that someday they will remember me. So, I beg, let me do everything God wants me to do now. Especially before I face him. And then he's like... Do you know, I gave you this gift. I also gave you this gift. I also gave you this. What did you do with it? So, I'm going to end the way we started. I want us to one, one more time. Focus. This time we don't have to close our eyes, but I want you to write something down. Bring out your phones. Bring out your phones. Open the notes. If it's not the note, open a text message. Anywhere you can write. Having heard all that I talked about, write down five things that you know. You know God wants you to do. Maybe you've been putting them off. You know God wants you to do this thing. He wants you to achieve it. Maybe you've been afraid of resources. Just five things that... If today were to be my last day, these this five things, I'm going to do these five things. If this is the last thing I do, I'll do them. Please write them down. Write them down. I want you to send them to yourself. It's like you're writing a letter to yourself. For me, I would say, dear Adiola, don't forget, we still have to do this, and this, and this. What have you been dreaming of that you're like, ash? If it's only one thing that you can think of, that's fine. If it's two, if it's three. But I would really love if you can come up with five things that at least things you want people to say about you when you are gone. Some of you had dreams when you were younger and now you're like, ah, life has happened. Or you got married and then that was it. I know some women like that. They get married and they forget how much work God put into them and the dreams he put into them, they think it's only about their husband. So you are supposed to support each other. Please write them down. All the dreams that God has given you. Now, copy it. Send it to yourself as a text message. Put at the very top. 
my dear so 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 put your name put your name at the top for me i'll say my dear adiola this is god's reminder that you are supposed to do so 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 i was going to sing at the end daddy but i know my time is up <laughs> But the word of the song really is, because he lives, you can face tomorrow. You can face anything. It's not about you. The person that it's about, he lives. And so because he lives, you can. And all fear should be gone. Because you know who owns what? Who owns the future? You know the person that owns it. You don't even know the, the future. For I know the plans I have for you. Says who? It's not even your plan. For I know the plans I have for you. And there are plans for good. You may think it's difficult, but there are, are actually plans for good though. They are not for disaster. And in fact, I will even give you a future and hope. So because he lives... You can do it. You can face tomorrow. Thank you so much, guys, for being so patient to listen to me. I'm so grateful. God bless you. Thank you so much.